is the first in the Southern Hemisphere. It's a world record we set with the length. No one's ever put one in this long before. We've been looking at the, uh, doing this for some time with the Germans, with Amex uh, and Max and his team. And it was just a great opportunity to learn uh, the ins and outs of it. So uh, Everyone was also very welcoming. I mean, we've kind of been welcomed by, by pretty much everyone in New Zealand, so very overwhelmed also with the, you know, how we were received. And I think with Hadley and Brunton, the great thing is that you, you know, one, have a partner that really has the capacity and the capabilities to do all of the surrounding work, so you can pull off also very complex jobs. Not only was it so difficult to, to you know, design and make sure we got it absolutely right, but on top of that, uh, level four lockdown happened, the planes fell out of the sky and there was no way of getting it here. Germany was in lockdown. It's the longest line I've ever produced in, in the history, so that had to get somehow fitted into a box to squeeze it into a plane to get it here under urgency. The, um, I think Wellington Water actually um, reached out to, to I think, I don't know, even know, to the German government or the embassy to strike a deal to get us flown in on, on the, the, one of the empty legs of the repatriation flights that were supposed to bring Germans back home. It being you know, picked up by police, brought into uh, into isolation, which I think, was from from like a macro perspective, was, I have to say, very stringent, very you know, adhering. It was two concrete lined ductile iron uh, pipes, which run 1.8 kilometres between Island Bay and Kilburnie through an old existing tunnel. They're cast underneath concrete. It looks like there's been a seismic shift in the tunnel and the concrete benching is broken about a quarter of a kilometre down the tunnel. In that section both both of the ductile line pipes have broken and uh, have water infiltration. The pressure liner that we're using today uh, has been around in Europe for about 10-15 years. Is that, look, this is the first one in the southern hemisphere. Let us do a world record attempt with it. Um, it's a big ask. Um, and we already been through the process to get some case study projects up and going, which were due to start sort of midway through the year. But then this one came on online and it was such an emergency and so much money at stake and, and there was no way of fixing it uh, apart from the solution. We couldn't say no, so that hence why it's uh, such an important project. The pipeline couldn't be cameraed because there's nothing in the world that can camera a pipe that small and that long. We developed the camera system that can camera over five kilometres in one hit with live feed back to the, to the user uh, in very high definition. We could also 3D scan with that and ascertain what the degree of bends were, what the diameter, the internal diameter of the pipe was, what the brakes looked like, um, all of that sort of stuff, so very, very clever technology. So there we have a mechanical, a mechanical seal, which has a ratchet system, uh, so it's got a quick lock seal comes on a, on effectively like a like it's a pipe plug, so it's like a like a lengthy air balloon. You have the the sleeve and the rubber over it. You drive it into the pipe. You expand the balloon, so you inflate it. It grows. Therefore, it kind of pops open. The the ridges and the cocks settle in, and then it just compresses against the pipe. Even just installing that was very difficult, but. We had the option if we installed it and we got it wrong, we could cut the latch and it would retract and we'd be able to extract it out again if something went wrong. So we don't want friction because you risk, um, you risk overstressing things, you risk getting things jammed and so forth. The liner can withstand up to 16 tonne of pull. We pulled the, the protective uh, high performance jacket, we pulled that at uh, 900 kgs for the entirety of the 1.8 k. Uh, and then the actual liner, which weighs 3.2 ton, for the majority of the pull were around 700 to 900 kgs. But what we did was pour um, half a cubic meter of um, lube into the pipe before we started, and then as we're pulling the sock into the um, into the pipe, initially we were lubing it as it went in, and then subsequently when we did the liner, we lubed it as well as it was going through the sock. And we also poured another half cube of, of lube in for good measure. So okay. usually you have the liners on uh, big big spools, and so they have like a big drum that feeds in. But because this was so long, 
1.8k long. We had it flat packed in a box uh, to fit in the aeroplane and there was no spindle that we could find big enough to actually fit it in a wrapped state. So we had to bring it out of the box uh, using a series of men to, to guide it around and then put it through our wrapping machine which folds it into a C shape and then it uh, wraps tape around it to hold it in that C shape. So it's only about half the size of the pipe. It's then drawn through with a, with a Dynex, 16mm Dynex rope uh, pulled into the sock and, and lube as it's going in. Uh, and, and we just quietly just keep pulling it in non-stop for 10 or 12 hours until it's through to the other side. Once it's through to the other side, we then let it relax overnight and then we insert uh, rubber bungs on either end. One of the pipe plugs then has a bypass and now we inflate the whole thing with, with air. So what then happens is the adhesive tape pops and the whole liner gets a nice round circular shape and now it sits really like a glove in, in, in the pipe. It's held into a circular shape purely through um, physics. It's wider than the pipe. So it's, once that's done, we, we fit the, we fit the sandy grip couplers, the, the mechanical couplers on each side, and, and then do air pressure tests on those, and then we do a hydraulic test where we fill the entire liner with water and take it up to operating pressure. We've got it designed to operate at 35 bar with the liner with a burst pressure of 70 bar, plus the host pipe is incredible for something that's only four mil thick.